what is up guys welcome back to the channel it's your boy SBT Evan and we are back with a banger today we are doing a review on my 2014 Mustang GT now you guys are probably wondering Evan why are you putting out a review in 2023 when this car is almost 10 years old because we have a lot of new mods I went and picked some up yesterday so I'm stoked the build is about to begin we're gonna start making this thing finally mine but before we get into today's video guys come on smash that like button it helps your boy out a ton consider subscribing if you guys like Mustangs and this is the channel for you we keep it authentic we keep it real and we got a lot of real estate up here big forehead so if you like that click that like button but without further ado let's get into today's video all right fam so of course we got to start off this video with talking about the performance now i'm in my neighborhood as you can see so your boy's not going to be doing you know 60 to 130s or nothing like that no dig racing here but I'm going to give you guys my overview. So in terms of performance, you guys are going to hear a lot of comparisons to my two other Mustangs that I own. I have a 2005 Mustang V6 and my 2003 Terminator Cobra. So if you're new to the channel and you like those cars or those interest you, consider subscribing. So a lot of um, comparisons between those two cars. So quite obviously, this car in terms of performance is much closer to the Cobra than it is the 4.0. So with the Cobra, it has so much low end torque. And whenever I really kind of heard about the Coyotes, all I ever heard was high end, you know, top end power comes in real heavy, like around like 4,000, 5,000 RPMs is when you start to feel it really kind of kick. I was blown away at how much low end torque this car had. It is so easy to speed in this car. Not that I condone that by any stretch, but I mean, you never like with regular daily driving, right? Coming from the 4.0, which that car has a decent amount of torque, you never have to go past 2,000 RPMs in this thing. I mean, that's how much torque it has, which is amazing. And mind you guys, the only performance mods this car has is axle back exhaust. And that's about to change. But other than that, it is virtually stock and it has that much pull, which is phenomenal. So I have only, you know, I've only really gotten on it a few times. I've only had this car a couple weeks. So I wanted to get this review out while it's fresh. I'm not biased. There's nothing else done to it. But then when we do the build, I'm gonna do a whole nother review with all the stuff that I've done. And I think it's gonna totally change the characteristics of this car. But another thing, so on the topic of performance, acceleration is phenomenal. Like it pulls like a freight train. It does pull really hard up top, but the low end torque, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that. So that was extremely impressive in my opinion, how much low end torque it has. On the topic of performance, um, we also gotta talk about the fact that this has really good gas mileage, which is nuts, right? So that's not something that you would expect for a car like this with, you know, 400 plus horsepower to have over, you know, like this car, I pretty much daily drive and I baby it and I get over 17 miles per gallon. My 4.0 that I baby that makes half as much horsepower gets worse gas mileage. So that to me is incredible. Now that might not excite a lot of people, but if you're looking for a daily driver that still kind of has some balls to it, the Gen 1 Coyote is sick. Now don't get me wrong, the Gen 2s and Gen 3s are phenomenal too, but the styling of the Gen 1 is just absolute chef's kiss. That is why I bought this car because the looks are undeniable. So speaking of looks, let's pull over here and let's talk about the exterior. All right, guys, it is a tad bit windy, so I'm going to try to protect the microphone as much as I can. But this car, from an aesthetic standpoint, I mean, it does not get much better. This thing just looks so, so good from every angle besides the wheel gap, which is atrocious, but that is going to be gone. Your boy picked some stuff up last night. So you can kiss that wheel gap goodbye, but it just looks phenomenal. So, so good. Again, in my opinion, guys, this is really looking mustangs in recent years um i'd argue the best looking mustang before this is the 03 cobra so i'm very very blessed to have both of these cars and let's look at the back because that's probably what this car is most known for the billion dollar taillights no but just came this car in factory spec looks unbelievable and then once we start doing some other modifications you know hint hint quad exhaust with the gt500 valence lower it drag pack CDC, like the GT500 style grill, this thing is going to transform night and day. You guys will probably not recognize this car by the time, you know, next year rolls around, it's gonna look totally different. Let's hop on the inside. All right, guys, so hopping into the interior, this is something that really surprised me, right? So coming from my 05, it looks very, very similar. I did not know that it would be this different. Now I gotta, you know, be upfront. This is the premium car. I'll put up the window sticker right now on the screen. 
This thing is very well optioned. It has just about everything. The only thing it does not have is the glass roof and it doesn't have the track pack. So let's show you guys some of the cool features in here. Now I'm gonna do a video talking about all the features. I don't even know them all yet, but there's a lot, especially with this car it has the track apps. We'll get into that. Show you guys a little graphics there. But man, oh, you guys hear that exhaust? Ooh, she sounds mean. I'm gonna put some clips in in a minute of that. But with the premium, this one has the sync one. So it has the navigation, which is actually pretty nice. Now I'm not gonna lie. If I had to be, you know, real picky, this looks like crap. Like this is old. This is something I'd like expect in, I don't know, an early 2000s Nissan. But it is what it is, who cares, it works. The fact that it has Bluetooth is dope, I love that. Heated seats, right? So I've touched on this before. Certain features I didn't know I needed until I had them. Heated seats are a must. Heated mirrors in the winter, which this car is daily driven, if you guys can't tell. Where's the snow? Yep, your boy drives it. Now I don't really drive it in the snow per se, but it's nice that it has this feature, so it'll do that. I mean, these seats are really nice, not a ton of bolstering, no big deal, but I love the fact that it has like, not diamond stitching, but it's stitched, so that way those door cards shouldn't fall off, I believe, unlike the 05, which did. I was not a big fan of that. Another thing that I love is that, oh, you guys can't see it right now, but it does have the ambient lighting. So the whole car, pretty much the interior illuminates and you can change the colors. It's so sick. I don't know if I can like, I don't know what I'm clicking. Your boy's clicking different buttons, hoping I can show you, but I don't think it's gonna work. But long story short, everything lights up. It is dope. I'll probably put a picture up here on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But this car has aged so well. It's retro, it's nice. Also, another thing that I didn't, you know, expect, the steering wheel is nice and thick. Like it, I know someone's gonna clip that, but it actually feels really good in your hands. Oh my gosh, I keep saying this and I just know that sounds so bad. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but it does actually, you know, it feels nice. It's sturdy. It's not super thin. Ooh, just kidding. But no, it's it's nice. Um, feels confidence inspiring when you're driving. I do like having the different buttons here. You know, I think cruise control is somewhere. Your boy doesn't know. I haven't used it enough. But change the volume and all that stuff. Um, but let's get into the other stuff because you guys don't probably care about all the amenities. You guys want to hear the car. So let's put up a little exhaust clip. I almost forgot. Another super nice feature, hopefully you guys can see, backup cam. You get to see all the Camaros, Challengers, and Chargers in your rear view mirror. But let's talk about braking and suspension. So kind of back to performance. Now braking, this is again, not the track pack. So it does not have the Brembos, which I believe the Brembos are like a four piston front, you know, caliper. Um, these brakes are very, very good in stock form. Now, again, I do not drag race. I've not really like slammed on them, but great brake feel. It's very comic inspiring, way better than the Cobra, way better than the, the 4.0. So I think that part is really, really nice. Now let's get into suspension because this is something that it's hard to maybe put into words, but when I compare this to the Cobra and the um, 05, this feels very, very thick. Like it's very big. You could tell like this is not a small car, but it's still kind of nimble. So even though there's body roll, because this does not currently have springs on it yet, you do feel kind of connected with the road, but like on this little turn, you feel the car just have a little bit of body roll. Now that's not a huge problem for me because I know lowering springs, adjustable pan hard bar, and eventually doing like different shocks and struts, it's gonna change the way this car handles. But I will say at higher speeds and bumps, having stock suspension is so nice. You know, the 4.0, that one's lowered on springs. And with 20 inch wheels, you feel a lot of the road. Every little bump you feel, this suspension is rather on the softer side, which I do like, I am gonna miss it a little bit, especially for like long rides. But we didn't buy this car. I didn't realize there's a cop in this neighborhood. You know, I didn't buy this car for it to be, you know, have all the creature comforts in it to be a Cadillac. Nope, this thing's gonna be louder. It's gonna be faster. We're gonna make it sick. But let's, you know, on the topic of that, let's talk about this thing right here. Cause you guys saw this earlier. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm looking at. 6R80, it is an automatic. So 
I wanted the 6R80. I did not want to deal with the MT82. With what I had planned for this car, I want it to be consistent. I'm probably going to go, you know, minor bolt-ons for NA, and then we're going to boost. I'm not going to do the max effort, you know, CJ setup with cams and all this. No, no, no. I You could buy boost for as much as you're going to put into it and make, you know, an extra 200 horsepower. The 6R80 blew my mind. Now, I'd heard a lot of good things and I'd seen, you know, it's usually a good sign when people swap these transmissions into other cars. That tells you there's something good about them. Man, oh man, is this trans fantastic. Now, not only, it's like butter. Compared to the 5R55 that's in my 05, that thing is clunky. This thing is spot on when it shifts. It's effortless and it knows. Like, there's not a ton of hesitancy. Now, I usually drive around just in drive. You could put it into sport, which is really cool. I'll do a video kind of talking about that because there's really not many videos online talking about how you can shift it. Now, that is specific to the 1314s, and that's another reason I wanted the 1314. One, I wanted the styling. I like that the exterior is all paint match. It doesn't have the plastic, you know, um, what do you call those things? You're like rocker panels and all that. I wanted it all paint match. And I wanted the 6R80 with the select shift because then I can shift the car when I want. Now, no, is it like a manual, like how my Cobra is? No, but it gives me all the confidence that I can drive it very similar to how I would drive the Cobra. So that is phenomenal. Another thing is that this trans can hold a stupid amount of power. So compared to the MT82, which some people, you know, there's a blow up or they'll have third gear issues with stock power levels. Some people, oh, big branch, don't want to get, you know, any damage to the car. But <laughs> MT82, some will last forever at high power um, or high torque. Other ones are just duds out of the box. You just don't know what you're going to get. And I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to deal with third gear synchro issues. None of that stuff. I wanted the trusty good old 6R80. And it is phenomenal. Throttle response with the car. It's great. It knows. As soon as you give it a little bit of gas, like here, we'll go up to the stop sign. I'll put it in sport and you guys can hear. It holds the RPMs higher. And as soon as you tap the brakes, it'll downshift. Like it's much more of an aggressive kind of throttle mapping, I believe. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy that. It makes the car feel way different. So here, we'll put it down into sport. And you guys can see hopefully there it's illuminated with the S. So second gear hanging on to second a little bit shifts are a little bit firmer and again i can't really get in uh, you know on it in this neighborhood because otherwise someone will key my car but i'm gonna hit the brakes and you guys will see okay i don't know if it really did it justice in the video but the downshifts it's crisp it, it knew i did it and immediately downshifted you really notice this when you're going like cruising speeds when you're going like i don't know let's say like 45 50 and you you hit the brakes it instantly will downshift like a gear or two and you're right in the perfect rpm range if you want to go to mexico if you get what i'm saying so that is super neat but i am rambling there you guys go that is kind of my basic review of the 2014 mustang gt there's so many features and things that i have to show you guys we're going to go into the track apps in a second all right guys so let's talk about the track apps this was a super cool feature again coming from the 03 cobra um, you have to get like an afr gauge this car has everything built in so you can see your cylinder head temp, inlet air temps, oil pressure, oil temp, trans temp, or trans, yeah, trans oil temp, voltage, the whole nine. And there's so much more. Like, for example, we go down here, fuel economy, 16.8. That's because I let the car <laughs> idle a lot this morning. But here is the cool thing, track apps. Accelerometer, you know, you can see the G-forces, brakes, acceleration, left, right. Acceleration timer, you can do 0 to 30, 60, 100, 8th mile, quarter mile. And it's all built into the car braking performance super super neat stuff and with the gauges you can change all the colors so for the my color i love this i had on the 05 my whole car i'm gonna try to put in the clip if i could find one of this car at night i totally changed the the gauges so it's purple with white and then i think all around the rest is red it looks so sick but you could totally make this car your own which i absolutely love all right you guys got a Pardon my, my red forehead. I had the, the foam mounted on my forehead if you guys are wondering how I get those clips. So it makes your boy a little, little red, but exhaust. Last but not least, I'm gonna put a few clips in here. Now, for those wondering, it is just the Flowmaster Outlaw axle backs. So that is it. Still has the resonators, stock mid pipe, stock manifolds, stock cats. 
and this car sounds really, really good, but you can kind of tell it's slightly restricted. Now, videos don't do it justice. The Flowmaster Outlaws are loud. Like they are ridiculously deep. Now it's not gonna be super raspy like compared to the Roush Axlebacks, but this car, when you start it, like it, you feel it in your chest, it kind of vibrates it. Like the, the wind, not, I don't wanna say the vibrates the windows, but if something's close, it literally like shakes it. It's kind of crazy, which is what I wanted. I didn't want, you know, typical Coyote guy to go with the most obnoxious loud exhaust. I didn't want that. I wanted something that was, you know, like my Cobra, it's deep, it's throaty, it's loud when you want it to be, but it hits you in the chest. It's like a, whoa, like that, it just sounds different. That makes sense. I don't like the whole raspy, poppy, crazy stuff. You know, maybe I'm just getting too old. There you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like. If you guys wanna see the transformation of this car, it's gonna be a complete 180 here very, very shortly. We are mid-March. I cannot wait for spring to get here. Once spring hits, we're doing the whole nine on this car. It's gonna be phenomenal. So thank you guys so much again. If you enjoyed, please be sure to drop a like. Helps your boy out a ton. Consider subscribing to the channel. We got so much content coming. You guys have no clue. We got the three cars worth of content. It's gonna be nuts. So thank you guys so much. And I'll catch you in the next upload. Peace out, guys.